Oh, hi. Ah. We're the Film Pigs on Geek Nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the best web show on the internet. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that isn't a kid with, with his wisdom teeth out trying to walk into his house. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> that, you, look, look. Look on the internet. It's look on the internet. Weird, okay. What are wisdom teeth? Wisdom teeth. My, my name is Stephen Falk. That is Todd Robert Anderson, that, that, that joker. <laughs> that, that's Steven Skelton over there. And oh my God, uh, four yeah. or five times? At like least. Yeah. Oh She's my hosting God. this show twice. And she's Piglet. hosted. Yes. This, is, uh, this is a film Piglet, Kether Donahue. Kether. Oh. Uh, Kether's a beautiful singer, but mostly an actress, an uh, animation voiceover person. And she's on a, a little little FX show called You're the Worst. What's that? FX, FX, no. Now it's going to be FX. season two. It's going to be What's on that? FX. What's You're the Worst? You're the Worst. Episodes. Yeah, yeah, thirteen episodes. We just got picked up for second season. Uh, it's on iTunes and 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 various things. You can watch it. I created it. Um, is it a drama? Todd's in it. No, it's a comedy. You're in it. Uh, yeah, you should know what it yeah, is. Yeah, you should know. I but, assumed um, it was a drama when I was anyway, working But anyway, thank out. you so much for being here Thanks again, Kether. We me. love uh, we love Kether Donahue. I just pop in every week. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, she's very busy. Don't 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 think otherwise. But but she makes time for us. Um, so we're gonna start uh, as you should at home right now by having uh, whipping up a little batch of popcorn. Oh, popcorn. Oh, clinky, clinkies. Mm -hmm. Extra butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel so much better. Oh, good year, good year, you guys. So, um, I know you're all asking, well, now that I watch, I'm gonna watch this, it's, it's, it's a Thursday, what should I do tomorrow? I don't know. Tomorrow oh, God. night, there's a lot of movies out. Oh. Yeah. What should I go see? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and where do you turn? You can turn to Metacritic, you can turn to Rotten Tomatoes, eh, what? You can turn to any number of qualified Times. online sources. Bogus. Yes. Qualified, and that, that's, my ass. that's what basic bitches do. Yep. Are you a yeah. basic bitch? No. I'm no. not a basic bitch. Hell what no. you're gonna do, that's right, Kether, and what non-basic bitches do is I'm they a basic look, dick. they turn to the film pigs mm -hmm. there you for go. a segment that's we true. call there Rash you Judgments. Go. There you go. And this is where we tell you if you should see the movies that are out tomorrow on Friday based on nothing, literally nothing but our own dickish instincts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe, Todd, uh -huh. you're prepared with a rash judgment. I am. Todd, take it away. Uh, my movie that I have not seen that I'm going to tell you whether or not you should see it is called Extra... There you go. Thanks. Looking no, good. that's what I needed. It's called Extra Terrestrial. Is it a sequel to E.T.? Not so much. It's a movie... Is it a sequel to Extro? No, it's not a sequel to that either, but it's cl you're closer. Right. You're getting warmer. Is it about someone named Et? No. <laughs> no, colder. Getting colder. <laughs> It's a movie from the Vicious Brothers. Those I, guys. I assume they're the siblings of Sid. I guess. Uh, they make scary shows. <laughs> and this is a, extra, it's a scary show about an extraterrestrial. See, what happens is there's a girl, and she's upset about something, like her mom dies, or there's a divorce, I can't remember. And so she and her friends, to get over her sadness, go to her family's cabin in the woods. Never happened before in a scary movie. People go into a cabin in the woods. Why do people still go to cabins? I don't know. Fishing. Things never, yeah, fishing. What? They want to go fishing, but their fishing expedition is interrupted by a, a comet. Ghoul, ghouls? A comet. No, a no comet extraterrestrials. Crash, crashes. They think it's a comet, and they're like, hey, let's go a see cromet? the comet. And they go find the comet, cromet. That's James they, Cromwell. They, they, find, they, they think it's going to be James Cromwell, and they go in the woods. And they're like, we love James Cromwell. He's a beloved character actor. Yeah. Look, he won't harm us. Yeah, he won't harm us. <laughs> so they go in the woods, and it's not James Cromwell at all. It's a spaceship. And the spaceship is filled with terrible aliens that want to hurt them. It's like fire in the sky, except... Not as smart, but it's rated R. Maybe titties. There may be titties. I don't know, but it's rated R, so I would imagine there's a, there'll that's at a, least that's be long lingering. That's what comes up on like a preview slug. Yeah. There may be titties. <laughs> Maybe titties. MT. There will be long lingering shots of young lasses in tight shorts, at the very least. Love that. Who doesn't? Um, and then uh, these kids are going to get killed by a creepy alien. Um, is it going to be good and scary? Mm. Probably not. But it has, it'll have gore and maybe some nudity 
and it's rated R, and you don't have to go to the movies to see it because it's also on VOD. You can go try to find a theater that's playing it, but that would be stupid because you can just order it in your living room and get completely baked and eat a pie and watch it. So I say, eat a pie and watch Extraterrestrial. Scum, what do you got for us? You guys. Let's get this under control. I got a rash judgment for you. It is for a blockbuster film. What's it called? Hunger Games <laughs> Mockingjay Part, Part One. one. Uh, colon. Colon. Uh, Here comes. <laughs> I stop looking at my nudies. Slash. <laughs> Don't invade Jennifer Lawrence's yeah. privacy. Uh, so I, my confession is, is I've only seen Hunger Games Uno. I didn't see Hunger Games Two because that just looked like oh they're just making them go on more Hunger Games. More games. So I, and you didn't like the first time. In the first one, I thought was kind of was kind of it was. I see if it had been a ninety-minute movie, I probably would have been okay with it. But it was like a ten-hour-long movie. And you'd seen Battle Royale. Exactly. So, so did you see her bullshit. new photos? No. So now apparently in this trailer, it's no more Hunger Games. There's no more games. No. Oh. So now it's like the full-on mm. like revolt so against. So why do they call oh. it Hunger Games? Because it's the name of the book, and now it's just now it's like it's Jennifer Lawrence is yelling at Donald Sutherland, and yeah. everything's gray. Say what you will about the Harry Potter franchise. Harry Potter was involved in all of them. So yeah, but Jennifer sense. Lawrence is involved in all of but them. But there's no hunger. Hey, this, is, this is his. This is his. Yeah, this, this is, is mine. I'm asking this questions. This is my judgment. And what's your, what's your judgment? I don't, you know, it's, it, pro, here's the thing. His judgment is what you You need to just shut up. Here's the Where's thing. Where's your it's, pacifier? It's, <laughs> It's a part one, and it's a part one. It's like, a, okay, The Hunger Games is a trilogy, no, no. right? This is and as now, long as a trilogy. I know, now that they've split. <laughs> wow, you turned down right. your shoulders. Bye, guys. Bye, I'm just, bye, bye. Bye. See you, Kevin. I'm Thanks just saying, it's, there's not a plot for two movies out of this last right. book. So he says, uh, don't see it. There's no that was <laughs> I'm saying that, but you're all, everyone's going to go see it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now he's sulking. Hey, what do you have for us? I have. <laughs> It's called The Imitation Game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not personally my cup of tea, but I can see how one would like it. I think it'll do pretty well. What did you liken um, it to? What did you call it? You likened it to another movie. Oh, well, because in the trailer, there's a lot of men, so it's a lot of testosterone. So it's like Expendables, but in the olden days. <laughs> 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 so like, um, a lot of men in like Expendable. vests and um, anyway, <laughs> it's about um, a brilliant mathematician played by Benedict Cumberbatch. Wait, is that his name? Yes, Close Cumberbatch. Yeah, come in. Um, and he, um, they they solve a code. They crack a code, the Nazi code, to win World War II. And, uh, you know, it looks suspenseful. It looks, you know, I can see how one would like it. If you're a history buff, if you like thrillers. Um, I personally don't want to see it, but you should. If you like <laughs> those kind of movies. <laughs> Kether, I would like to give you a spinoff where you just review movies. <laughs> it's just Kether's rash judgment every goddamn week. Yeah, well, that's I'm... what the past few weeks have been. I know. But I've sure. been the hostess. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. Normal, well, yeah. okay, so so if you like, uh, it's not her cup of tea, <laughs> it's but not if you my like, if you like history or old timey expendables, you might like <laughs> the imitation game. That was rash judgment, you guys. We we the film pigs. We we put on persona. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We we this is not really us. We don't let you see us that often. No, the inside. So we true. we thought. Um, yeah, we thought we would, we would back, do, yeah. do a segment where we would just be us talking, mm -hmm. telling little mini stories about movies, about uh, about notable trips to the movies that we have had. Yeah, it's not yeah. necessarily about the movies, but the trips the experience to the of the of, of going to the the, the picture shows. Because nobody really talks about the that anymore. Shows. Yeah, no one really talks about that. So so we're gonna do that. This is this is inside the film pigs colon movie picture goings. <laughs> What should we do? Wait, I oh, wasn't ready uh, to this can you get that? What? Just get that thing right there. What? It's thing? right there. This thing. Just pick oh. it up. Oh, this right here. Roll it. Hello, internet. This is my terrible movie story. The year is 1983. My parents, who should not be judged by this story, have made 
the questionable decision to take me to sudden impact. <laughs> I am 11 years old. Now, normal Dirty Harry movies, I'm 11 year old me is, was cool with. I was mature for my age. I'm OK with uh, people being blown away by Dirty Harry. That's fine. But Sudden Impact was the weird Dirty Harry movie that was all about the rape revenge kind of thing. And it was very awkward and very strange and something I couldn't deal with. And in the course of the movie, the playback, the movie failed exactly at the point where in the group, if you know Sudden Impact, there's the group of uh, the rapey group. And one of the rapey group is a rapey lady who was the lady who lured Sandra Lockhart and her sister to, to be raped. Then eventually Dirty Harry would shoot a bunch of these guys. But uh, there's a point in the movie where she talks about one of the guys who Sandra Lockhart has been blowing away. And she says, oh, this guy got killed. He was in our rape group. And uh, he blew his balls off, or whatever the line is. What I remember very specifically is, at that exact moment she said balls, the projector died. So the, the projection went like to dark, and it slowed down. So all, all the theater heard was she blew his balls. And I'm sitting next to my parents. And there's like a few minutes that goes by while they fix the projector. And then, it, and then and they roll it back, and they get the thing rolling again. And then it rolls up at the same point, which is like, balls. And then it breaks again, balls. And I'm sitting next to my parents at a Dirty Harry movie. And this happens like two more times. And then it continues. And uh, I mean, it gave us the make my day phrase, which is great. Hey, uh, I'm Todd. This is my story about going to the movies. I was probably, I guess, 12. And my parents uh, took me to Framingham, Massachusetts, to the multiplex to see a movie with my little sister and my little brother. Uh, we were family, and we went to the movie shows. I can't remember what the movie was. It was probably a Disney movie, maybe. Or maybe it was Cloak and Dagger. Or maybe it was Karate Kid Part 2. I don't know. It was, the point is, it was a family film. And we all went together. And it was a matinee in the afternoon. And we watched the movie. And as we were watching the movie, I, I noticed a couple who were sitting up close to the screen. You could see them silhouetted. And they were like making out. And their making out got more fervent and like incredible, and the silhouette of them in front of Cloak and Dagger or whatever it was, was awesome. They were like going at each other and they were like, like really, really like getting on each other and like tur taking turns being on top and it was crazy and it was intense, you know? And his shirt was open, I could see his shirt like flapping, like the silhouette, and my parents were terrified because these teenagers were making out and they were like, what are the, our kids thinking? And then the movie ended, and I was like, I said to my mom, what were those teenagers doing? And she said, I don't know, making out or something. I don't know what it was. And then when we were outside, I saw that teenage kid, like, and he wasn't in silhouette. I could see him for real. He was like a white kid, and he had long, scraggly hair, and he had a button-down shirt that was just open, and he was out in the lobby waiting for his girlfriend to come out of the bathroom, and he had his shirt open. And he had this like really nasty scratch from here down to here. It was me looking at it like it was like bleeding. And I thought to myself, I can't wait to be a teenager. Hey, what's up? This is Lombardo Boyarn. First of all, I want to say Skelton's a pussy. Ooh, Dirty Harry scares me. My mama took me to see a Dirty Harry movie. Ooh. I was 11. <laughs> I was 11. Well, that's what it leads into this. What I'm going to tell you is like my story, right, growing up with a Mexican mom, right, who's like, you know, kind of had broken English and stuff like that. Sometimes her movie choices were questionable. <laughs> and my mom would always say, like, a churro. Everybody's had a churro, right? You eat churros, they're really tasty with yeah, the cinnamon really and stuff like that. Yeah, thanks. But it's also like a, a slang. It's also slang for something that's boring. And my mom loves saying that. Like, if there's not blood or shooting or 
any kind of action in a movie, she'll be watching, she's like, ah, pinche churro. You know, just bam, it's done, right? So the stuff she would take is see. So back to Steve's a pussy. Uh, because I got to see The Exorcist in the theaters when I was about six. Oh, All right? Ah. Yes. Yes, thank you, mother. <laughs> I remember literally being under the seat, like so scared, and I'm, I'm looking at her like, hey, are you gonna take us out of here or nothing? She's just fucking watching the movie, just having a blast, like, <laughs> we're not even there. And then the other day, so this is like a, a group of movies. This is the experience of growing up with my mom. So on cable, I see this movie, and I'm like, that sounds familiar. I spit on your grave. All right? Yeah. Thanks, Mom. But see, of course, I mean, it was horrible. I mean, it's a horrible movie. I tried to watch it. The acting is bad. I mean, the rape scene, yes, it's long, but it's, you know, it's so bad. But as a kid, of course, I'm like, this is, I've seen a naked chick. You know, it's crazy. American Werewolf in London, I remember that. Back to, uh, you know, sex scenes, seeing sex stuff on, like, first day. I remember that was the best sex scene ever. So, uh, anyways, mine's just kind of like a thanks to Mom. So, it was whatever your magic mic came out. I was with my ex-boyfriend at the time, and my ex-boyfriend really wanted to see Magic Mike. I wasn't as excited, but I was like, all right, you know, I'll go, sure. He really wanted to see it, but he was so embarrassed that he wanted to see it. So like every step of the way, we, he like put on this act that I had to play along with. So like when we went to the box office, he was like, <sighs> All right, you want to see, right, she wants to see Magic Mike. All right, fine, let's buy the tickets. And then, like, as we're walking in the movie theater, there is all women in the theater, so we're, like, walking through the aisle. And as we're walking in the aisle, he's like, she dragged me to see it. And all the girls in the aisle were like, that's a good boyfriend. And I was like, yeah, he's the best. And then, like, during the movie, he, like, was really into it, but then, like, he would, like, check to see if anyone saw that he was into it and then when the movie was over all the girls were like oh he's such a good boyfriend and he's like yeah she dragged me through that so anyway that's my story <laughs> I liked the movie not as much as him so last year I was uh, in Madison Wisconsin which is a very liberal uh, city in the middle of sort of a red state and uh, my sister and I went to see 42. I was very excited. I'm a big baseball fan, love Jackie Robinson. And um, we go to see the movie, and the theater's full, and it's fucking inspiring. Like, it's not the greatest movie, but the, the, the story of integrating baseball and, and all the stuff that he had to go through was so inspiring. And I was in a really weird mood, and I was, I was like tears, like running down my face, so inspired. And uh, in the movie, Jackie and his, and his wife have a baby, and, and the baby is born, and they pick it up, and it's, I'm just like, oh, this is amazing, and, and look at all he's done. And then a couple behind me, uh, the guy leans over to the girl and says, about the baby, wow, they really look like little turds, don't they? <laughs> and I, I turned, and I looked at this like fat, redneck, white couple, and they saw the look of horror and tears on my face, and they saw me, and they just started laughing. And uh, I had to turn seething and watch the rest of 42, just thinking murder thoughts the entire time. And uh, it was this movie, and, and it was sort of to reflect, uh, look how far we've come. We've integrated baseball. No, no, no. Fat fucks who came to see the movie, they knew what it was about just wanting to be racist on a date night. America, you guys. Oh, wow. Wow, that wow. is an amazing story. I feel like I know more about all I have of known you. you guys for a long time. I've worked with you yeah. now for, for a good year plus. And, and Lombardo was there. And oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, Lombardo, Lombardo Moriar, was, and now I know yeah. more about that guy. Amazing. I, I feel like, uh, I feel closer. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. When you have icons on the t on your on your laptop Internet every week, icons. Uh, icons. there's a distance. There's yeah. a distance, and we wanted to bridge well, you, that. We get put on a pedestal. Uh, we just wanted yeah. to lower that pedestal a little bit, so you don't. We're fallible, you guys. You may not know that from watching us for the last 119 <laughs> episodes. We're vulnerable. Yeah, we are vulnerable. We're real we're people. Human. We have we're, human feelings. We're real people. <laughs> we're people with human feelings. Uh, 
So look, unlike this, Matthew McConaughey and his at Lincoln. this point, I would normally do a little bit where I wrap everything up. Yeah. But I, I just feel like we, we. I feel closer to you now. Mm. So I'm just gonna say, again, my name is Stephen Falk. That's Todd Robert Anderson, a real, real guy. Real person. Stephen J. Skelton. I feel things. Super real. Yeah. Super real. And yeah. this is cut it down to you. The I'm realist. a vibe. The and, uh, realist person. On behalf of a real, mm -hmm. a real network, the concession stand has been closed due to feelings.